So you want to pick the perfect subwoofer for your vehicle. We all know that adding a subwoofer to a sound system can drastically improve the performance and add that much needed bass. But unfortunately, picking the right subwoofer for your application can be a daunting task. There's mistakes that are made that I see time and time again, things that we definitely don't want to do, and there's things that we do want to do to make sure that we get the best bass performance. I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the channel where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. And today we're gonna talk about the do's and don'ts of picking a subwoofer. We're gonna start with the most important do right up front because this is the mistake that I see constantly please, for the love of the base gods, measure your space before you pick a subwoofer. It's unfortunate, but I see it quite often where people will get subwoofers that are far too large for their application. I think this happens a lot because people might hear a system in a buddy's vehicle and they think to themselves, well, I definitely wanna be louder than that, so I have to get more subwoofers and I have to have larger subwoofers in order to do so. But that's not always the case. In fact, if you do put larger subwoofers in an air volume that is too small for those subwoofers, you can actually hurt the performance and they might not even be as loud as they could if you got a smaller subwoofer that is more perfectly matched with the volume that you have available. So the point here is to take measurements before we purchase the subwoofer. So how do we do that? We're gonna to want to measure three different dimensions because we're measuring 3D space. So we're gonna measure the depth, we're gonna measure the width, and we're gonna measure the height of the area that we have available. Now, if you're working with inches and feet, you would take those three values if they're measured in inches and you would multiply them by each other and then divide by 1728 in order to get the amount of cubic feet. So as an example, let's say that we have 32 wide and 20 deep and 16 tall. If we do 32 times 20 times 16, that's 10,240 cubic inches. We can divide that by 1728, that's the magic number because that's how many cubic inches are in a cubic foot, and that will give us 5.9 cubic feet. Now this is super important, please listen to this part. That 5.9 cubic feet is not the air volume that your subwoofers are going to have available to them. I want to stress this because that 5.9 cubic feet is just your overall volume, it's not the air volume. In order to find the air volume, you need to account for displacements of that space. So you're going to have wood that makes up the box that takes up internal volume. If it's a ported enclosure, you're going to have the port displacement. You're going to have the displacement of the size of the subwoofer itself. I made a really in-depth video in the past here on the channel that goes more into how to approximate what air volume you actually have available for the subwoofers. I'll link it down in the video description. So to summarize, we know that we do want to measure our space. So as an example, let's say we've done some measurements, we've used that approximation technique I talk about in that other video, and we've learned that we have three cubic feet of air volume to work with. How can we pick a subwoofer now that we know that information? Well, the next thing is we do want to make sure that we do our research. Now there's a website that has always been my personal favorite for many years, long before I started the channel, and this is the perfect time to segue into talking about them because they are show sponsor, Crutchfield. On the Crutchfield website, we can quickly select subwoofer features that we know we wanna to use to quickly narrow down which subwoofer is perfect for us. We can also use the compare tool to quickly compare features from different subwoofers, further determining the perfect subwoofer for our exact application. To learn more about Crutchfield and take advantage of a special offer for you, you guys, car audio fabrication fans, you guys can check out the link here on screen or down in the video description. Now, what about a don't when it comes to picking out subwoofers? Don't buy subwoofers purely based on their power handling or their marketing. I see this all the time with guys that are new. They are convinced that if you wanna have even a half decent subwoofer system, you gotta have at least 3000 watts of power going to that sub. Not only do some manufacturers unfortunately advertise what is considered a peak wattage value when we should be focusing on the RMS wattage value, even if the subwoofer is truly capable of handling a crazy amount of power, something like 3000 watts or whatever that number might be, most vehicles nowadays will require substantial electrical upgrades in order to be able to support the electrical for an amplifier that's going to power that sub. 
I mention this because if you do truly want to power a subwoofer that is that powerful, you need to upgrade the alternator for your vehicle. You need to do the electrical big three upgrade. You need to make sure that your power wire, your ground wire, that that's all properly sized and nice and substantial, large enough for your system. So the problem here I see quite often is people will get that super powerful subwoofer, but they kind of got in over their head. They didn't realize that you have to make all these additional upgrades in order to truly support the power that that sub needs. That powerful subwoofer might not be as efficient, so if we're only actually giving it something like a thousand watts, it might have been a better choice to pick a subwoofer that is truly rated for that a thousand watts, and then we don't necessarily need to do as many vehicle electrical system upgrades. The other aspect of this is to be careful with the marketing approach that some of these companies take. A lot of companies love to use that term competition subwoofer that doesn't necessarily mean anything. You don't have to have some sort of verification by some independent lab to be able to name your subwoofer a competition subwoofer. Any subwoofer could be considered competition. It also seems common that people like to compare the size of the motor, the magnet on the subwoofer. They like to think, okay, well that has a much larger magnet, so surely that must be far, far more powerful and that might not be the case. We really need to look into the teal small parameters of the subwoofer to fully understand how it's going to perform. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Next up, we have a do. Do determine what is most important for you for your application. Are you most interested in sound quality? Are you most interested in SPL and output? Do you want a combination of the two? This is something that you definitely wanna consider when picking out your sub. We can take this into account by looking at the TS parameters. So what that means is every subwoofer performs a little bit differently and we can take measurements of its exact parameters in order to determine what it excels at, whether it be sound quality or output or a mixture of the two. Now there's a ton to talk about on each of those different parameters. That's why I have a full separate video detailing all of that. But here's some quick examples. Generally speaking, a subwoofer with a lower FS, which is the resonant frequency frequency, a lower FS value is going to perform better with the lower bass. But I want to be clear that that's not always the case as some of those other TS parameters can impact that performance. Another good parameter to pay attention to when comparing two different subwoofers is the sensitivity. The sensitivity value can tell us which subwoofer will provide more output given the same input power. But what's important to understand here is let's say it's a value of something like 93 dB, that doesn't mean that you're you're only going to get to 93 dB with that subwoofer because once you add an enclosure and all of the vehicle acoustics, it can easily get louder than that. It's just a comparison tool to compare different subwoofers, like I said, with that same input power. Now, when we're searching and picking out a subwoofer, don't always exclude powered subwoofers from consideration. I'm sure you're all familiar with a component subwoofer. We purchase the subwoofer, we purchase a box or build a box, we purchase a separate amplifier, we tie all of them together to make a system. But there are also really nice powered subwoofer systems where the amplifier is built into the box. Unfortunately, I think in the past that a lot of these powered subwoofer systems weren't really designed all that well, so the car audio community kind of shunned them away. But I think that we're seeing a lot more companies make good strides in making quality powered subwoofers. Now I hate using the term entry level because that doesn't necessarily mean bad. I would just say if you're not looking for a super loud output system, if you're looking for more of a complementary subwoofer system, this category is definitely something to consider because there's multiple advantages. One is ease of install. You don't have to determine a separate spot in the vehicle to mount the amplifier. The amp is part of the subwoofer enclosure and as long as the manufacturer has done their R&D, there's not gonna be any issues with that amplifier vibrating as it's part of the box. Another advantage is any good manufacturer is going to make sure that the subwoofer that they're putting in that box, that the box matches what that subwoofer needs to perform well. So the advantage there is it's not like you're buying a random component subwoofer and a random pre-made box and pairing the two together and hoping for good results, 
the manufacturer knows exactly which subwoofer and exactly which box they've paired together, and they know that they pair well together to get good performance. The final advantage is sometimes it makes more sense for your budget to go with the powered solution. As an example, let's look at this JL Audio Micro Sub. Now this package is $500 and it has a built-in 250 watt amplifier and of course the subwoofer along with the box. Now if we were to pick their entry level 250 watt amplifier along with the exact same subwoofer, that's $480. But that's not even accounting for a box. You would still need to either make your own box, and that's definitely gonna be more than $20 in materials, or even if you got lucky and you were able to find a ported pre-made box that would match well with that subwoofer, it's easily gonna be more than $80 or so. So you can see if we were picking out a more entry-level system, it definitely starts to make more sense to look at those powered subwoofer solutions. Next up, when we're picking a subwoofer, we definitely do want to consider the type of enclosure that our subwoofer is best suited for. Remember those TS parameters from earlier? If we take a subwoofer's FS and divide it by its QES value, we get a value called Efficiency Bandwidth Product, or EBP for short. Now, if the EBP is less than 50, we should probably use that subwoofer in either a sealed enclosure or a fourth order bandpass style enclosure. If the EBP is greater than 100, then we should probably use a ported enclosure or a sixth order bandpass enclosure. And if it's between 50 and 100, we have more flexibility on what enclosure style we want to use. Now, the EBP is not a hard set rule. We can still get great performance by ignoring this rule, but it does give you an idea on a particular subwoofer's trade-off between efficiency and bandwidth, and it helps us to better choose what might be more optimal of an enclosure for that sub. Now, a don't. Don't pick a subwoofer that has the wrong impedance or the wrong number of voice coils to properly match up with our amplifier. This is another super common mistake that I see made. People get so click happy to hurry up and buy that subwoofer before they ever take into account doing a little bit of research and making sure that they've chosen the right impedance impedance and amount of voice coils, let's talk about how you do that. If you're new, a quick explanation, every subwoofer has what's called a voice coil. A voice coil is basically a winding of wire on the inside of the subwoofer that's in the middle here in between the speaker. And what happens is when we run electrical current through that voice coil, it's going to make the coil move, thus moving the subwoofer. That's a really simple explanation, I know, but for those of you that are new out there, that explains it. So every subwoofer has to have at least one connection to that voice coil. And you might hear of dual voice coils subwoofers, that doesn't mean that there's actually two different coils per se, it just means that there's two separate runs of the wire around the coil. So the way you can quickly determine if a subwoofer is dual voice coil is if it has not only one set of connections that you can see right there, but if we turn this around you can see that there's two sets of connections. So this is a dual voice coil subwoofer. Is this subwoofer better than the exact same subwoofer with only one set of connections? Absolutely not. There is no benefit to having two voice coils other than it giving you a little bit more wiring flexibility for your system. But if you pick out a subwoofer that matches your amplifier well and matches the impedance that you intend to run that amplifier at, then it doesn't matter. So let's talk through this here. Here I have an audio control LC-1.800. This is a subwoofer amplifier. It does 800 watts at two ohms. That's why we want to make sure that we take a look either on the website that we're purchasing the amp from or take a look in the manual. We wanna make sure that we know the minimum impedance that an amplifier can run at because usually at that minimum impedance value, that's where it's going to create its max output. In this case, at two ohms, it will create 800 watts. So when it comes to picking a subwoofer to match up with this amplifier, let's say that we're looking for a single subwoofer that's rated at 800 watts, but we also wanna make sure that it's going to allow us to connect at two ohms. So as an example, we would pick a subwoofer that's rated at 800 watts and it has a single two ohm voice coil. Or another option is we could look for a subwoofer that has dual four ohm voice coils. And the math works in two different ways depending on if we're connecting the subwoofer voice coils, the two voice coils in series or in parallel. In series, we connect positive to negative, positive to negative, and in that case, the voice coil's impedance would add up. So in the case of a dual four ohm subwoofer, it'd be four plus four, we'd be running the amp at eight ohms, which means that we're not gonna get that full power output. 
Instead, what we'd want to do is run in parallel. And the math here is a little bit more complicated. In this case, you would do 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4. That equals 1 over 2. And we take the inverse of that. I know that might sound complicated for some of you. I'm going to make it even easier for you guys in a second. But that would give us a 2 ohm load by using those dual 4 ohm voice coils wired in parallel. Now determining the load at the amplifier, I know guys, it becomes even more complex when you start adding in additional subwoofers and those subwoofers might be single or dual voice coil. It can all get really complex in order to determine what you actually need. Once you learn the math behind it, it's really not that complex, but if this is confusing to you, definitely check out the tech article down in the video description. It's also from Crutchfield. They've done a really good job where you just pick your options that apply to your system and it can help you make sure that you're making the right choice. Now I know this video was a little bit more on the basic side for our friends that are just starting to join the community, but I definitely have a ton more advanced videos already here on the channel. If you want to see more of that advanced information, definitely check out the subwoofer topics playlist video here I've linked on screen. Next time you're picking a subwoofer for your system, definitely check out show sponsor Crutchfield. You guys can learn more and take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans at the link here on screen or down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with Bart, Mike, Ali, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. And thank you guys for watching.